O'Brien. What's going on, everyone? This is Jacob Shoup. You're watching the Tom O'Brien Show. We have a lot in store for you today. First, I want to say we have uh, Larry live trading tomorrow. We are all good to go for that. Uh, so if you have not checked that out, I'd recommend going and seeing if you can uh, get in there because it's really uh, it's a good time. You know, there's a lot of people. Uh, good questions are being asked. Larry answers your questions while he's kind of trading live. And it's just uh, nice to have someone uh, with such experience next to you while you're trading. Additionally, we're going to have Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle on today. Let's take a look what we got going on in the market. We have the composite up about 0.63%. The Dow Jones Industrial off about 0.43. The E Mini up 0.09. Is it that spy up about 0.1%? Uh, the dollar taking a little bit of a breather here up that 104 level, um, but still snugly above it. You have crude oil coming off a little bit today, but still in the 70s. Uh, the gold contract. So the gold contract is up 0.68 right now, trading at 2,748 off its high of 2,772. Uh, we take a look a little bit, you know, maybe at Newmont before we keep going. Uh, they get smoked off 15% right now. Yeah, so let's take a look at that just quickly. Of course, we were talking about how they're going to have their earnings uh, posted yesterday. Um, they, they did not do uh, too well on them. Uh, so it represents an earnings surprise of negative 2.41%. Came out with quarterly earnings of 81 cents per share. Uh, 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 kind of against a consensus, I would say, of 83 cents. Um, that is a little bit better than 36 cents a year prior. I think really, you, you know, kind of what happened with Newmont, because they, they, they didn't do too bad comparatively, right? Like, if you take it in the context of how they've done in the past, they didn't. But I, I think estimates were extraordinarily high for Newmont, which is kind of what this reaction is. You know, I don't know to what extent that the, you know, high price here, 58.72, uh, was, was pricing in these earnings, uh, you know, to call this, you know, a massive dip or something that we're going to recover from. Uh, maybe not right back up to the highs, uh, but certainly off of 49.09. Uh, um, but as it stands now, it's a little bit, a uh, little bit tough for Newmont. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, so I mean, you know, labor is high for these guys. Energy is high for miners in general. So they fell short of expectations, spending more to dig up the precious metal of gold. In Australia, Canada, Peru, and Papua New Guinea, um, capital requirements were pretty high um, to get those mines operational, at least in Australia. So, you know, they just were having some issues. Uh, again, I, I don't, I think a lot of this had to do with uh, pretty high expectations uh, that maybe they were not uh, intended uh, or really ever going to meet. Yeah, so, okay, and so here as well. So they posted the highest quarterly profits in five years. It's raking in $922 million and net income attributable to shareholders for the first quarter. So that's not so bad, right? And we'll see if we can kind of get a bounce off this. This is pretty high volume compared to what this stock usually does. And you've been moving up. I think I looked at this a while ago for someone who had called in when we were back at the old office. And I just didn't really like see anything with the stock. Um, you know, the only types of volume you get at all was back here in April, you know, you get a nice gap up, right? And it just kind of flew along down on low volume and just kind of kept rising the whole way. Um, and then the last, of course, day with volume is today with a big, big bar down. So we'll see what happens with Newmont. Of course, gold is still doing okay. We're really close to the all time highs and uh, this probably still has some gas left in it for sure. Uh, you have silver it's kind of sideways right now at 3381 and then copper up about 0.66% at 436. You have the Russell, uh, up modestly at 0.12. See if anything else is coming out. Somewhat interesting. You have the bonds kind of coming back up in price, which is nice. To, oh, yeah. Man, this is like crazy. I like, I'm not a Tesla investor. I'm, just, I'm not. Um, which probably is my detriment a lot of times because <clears throat> shorting this stock, it just gets you into a bad situation every time. And I'm pretty sure we say that on here. Like, there's a lot of issues with Musk, right? I mean, of course, if Trump wins, yeah, I, Musk getting into some cabinet position, I, I would imagine that is going to be a uh, super sweet target um, for some kind of antitrust investigation if he is still on the board in these companies um, or if he's in any way affiliated with them 
at higher levels, which I can't imagine that he would, you know, want to relinquish that kind of control. Um, but as it stands now, you know, you, you short this stock and it, it, you get burned so heavily. And this is a massive gap up on pretty huge volume. Um, so let's take a look about that. Yeah, so improved operating profit margins, automated growth, uh, gross profit margins, excluding the benefits of regulatory credits, which is awesome. And better earnings per share than had been expected from July to September. Uh, reported better than expected net income and its lowest cost per goods ever sold of about 35100 per vehicle, uh, which is impressive. Again, I don't, I'm not uh, really rocked with grok or whatever uh the the ai model um i, I believe that will help in some capacity with you know the automated driving that in my opinion is the long-term play for tesla right is it's that ai trained on all of the data that it has for self-driving i i believe that we will get to some point at least in cities where people will be taking these kind of autonomous vehicles and uh, tesla of course is going to be one who's going to provide that data unless there's some kind of competition with it. Uh, you know, uh, Google obviously can compete on that kind of level, uh, but I don't know if they want to keep that kind of stuff uh, for themselves. But but Tesla is definitely the one playing the most in this realm. Uh, so it actually is a really interesting like AI and data play as well on the long term. But I always get, you know, freaky at these uh, auto companies themselves are a little bit weird for me. I know I'm in Rivian. Uh, I, I don't know how that's doing today, but you know, $828 billion market cap wise. B actually isn't like insane or anything like that. Um, but yeah, that, in my opinion, I just don't, I just don't play Tesla ever. Um, I think these levels are kind of high for me at least. And, um, but if you were, you know, just don't short the, the thing, uh, especially around earnings because it always just gets salvaged. And Musk is super good at talking himself out of these kind of situations. Uh, since we're talking about Tesla, I wanted to speak a little bit yesterday, but we kind of didn't have enough time uh, for lithium batteries and some of the stuff. And it was just actually great timing because QuantumScape also came out. I was initially going to talk about Stellantis and some of the deals they were doing uh, with solid state lithium batteries, which no doubt is the future. And then lo and behold, today there's some news about QuantumScape. And they actually have something that's super interesting uh, that I hadn't considered. So we'll talk about that. We're going to have Tim Ord on next.